Okay. Now, first, before knowing the pro actual definition of real numbers, uh, before that, let's have, let us revise all the different types of numbers. So under that, the first is natural numbers. So you know, set of natural numbers starts from one. So one, two, three, four, and so on. This is set of natural numbers. Next, then we have the next type of numbers. That is whole numbers. So whole numbers are the numbers that starts from zero. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four are set of whole numbers. Then we have integers. So what are integers? Integers are the negative numbers, the positive numbers, as well as zero included in it. So all the negative numbers, all the positive numbers and zero together form set of integers. Then we have set of rationals. So as I had explained to you earlier, what are set of rationals? All those numbers which can be written in the form of P by Q and Q not equal to zero. Okay. All of the numbers of the form P by Q that can be written in the form of P by Q where Q not equal to zero is rational numbers. They are the set of rational numbers. Rational numbers are denoted by the letter Q. Okay. Then we have the last P that is called as the set of real numbers. Now, all these numbers together, okay, all these numbers together form set of real numbers. Clear? So, natural number is a subset of whole numbers. So, natural number is a subset of whole numbers. And if you see clearly, whole numbers is a subset of integers. And then again, if you look carefully, integers is a subset of rationals. Now, all of these numbers together form real numbers. Okay, they form real numbers. All these numbers together form real numbers. Is this clear now? What are real numbers? Real number is a combination of all. All. So whenever somebody asks you, what is a real number? So you can say a real number is a combination of set of natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rationals. Okay. Now, uh, one more thing that a your textbook does not say is irrationals. Okay. Irrationals also come under inside uh real numbers so uh, irrationals are opposite of rationals so if you see rational numbers are those numbers which can be written in the form of p by q and opposite of this is numbers which cannot be written in the form of p by q so they are called as irrational but this is not there in your syllabus but you just can keep in mind okay so what is real numbers Real numbers is a combination of natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rationals. Okay. And later, at some point, if you study irrationals, then you include irrationals also in your definition. So, set of real numbers is combination of natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rationals, and irrational. Clear? Up to here? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll explain this. What is order relation? Yes. 
So to understand order relation, first what you do is you take two rational numbers. Okay, what are rationals? Numbers which can be written in the form of p by q, where q is not equal to zero. Fine. Okay. Yes, so we are taking two rational numbers, p upon p upon q and r upon s. The denominator should not be zero. So just we are saying q strictly greater than zero, s strictly greater than zero. Clear? Okay. Yes. Sir. So the first property. First property, if you see, it says p into s is equal to q into r, then p upon q equal to r upon s. Now look at this carefully. So you, you might be rem you, you remember this property, right? Suppose if you say two upon seven is equal to one upon three. So here, what do we do? We do cross multiplication. Yeah, so 2 into 3 is equal to 1 into 7. So you do cross multiplication and you solve further. Now, how do you know that you have to do cross multiplication? That comes from this property. If, if, the, if the denominators are not the same. No, no. When you have equal to sign here and a fraction on both the sides. Yes. Now, so that is why you do cross multiplication. Now, the reason you do cross multiplication comes from this property. P into S is equal to Q into R. So that becomes P upon Q is equal to R upon S. So it is same like cross multiplying it. Do you understand this? Yes. Second property says if P into Q is greater than Q into R, P into S greater than Q into R, then the fraction is also greater. For example, Okay, if P is greater than Q, okay, if P is greater than Q and you multiply R on both the sides, okay, so you, oh, wait, no, no, don't do it like this, not R. Look at this example here. 2 into 3 and 4 into 5. Fine. 2 into 3 and 4 into 5. Which is greater? Or oh, I'll take it other way down. Which is greater? 4 into 5. 4 into 5 is greater. Okay. Now, if you see the fraction. I'll give color 4 upon 2 will be so I write a 4 upon 2 and 5 upon oh sorry 3 upon 5 3 upon 5 okay so from here which will be greater three upon five three upon five will be greater Look at this property. What this property says? If P into S is greater than Q into R, then P upon Q is greater than R upon S. Four, you, can, four, 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 four. Yes. You, can, you can see why it is greater. Because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 3 divided by 5 is 0. Point something. 0. 0.6. So you can see which is greater. So this property, what is it? It is true. Correct? Yes. 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 Yes
Correct. Did you understand the second property order relation? Yes, sir. And the third one is opposite of the second one. The third one says if P into S is less than Q into R, then the fraction P upon Q is also less than R upon S. This is the opposite of this. Clear? Three order relation properties. Yes? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, now these are very, very, very important properties that is called as properties of real numbers. Properties of real numbers. Like what can you do? What operations you can do with real numbers? So let's see the very first property. The first property is called as commutativity or commutative property. So commutative property So this column is for addition and this column is for multiplication. Now understand it properly. So what this says that you take any two real numbers A and B. You take any two real numbers A and B. You do A plus B or if you do B plus A, that is you interchange both of them will be equal to each other, okay? A plus B equal to B plus A. This is called as commutativity property. For example, can you give me any two real numbers? Any two. Three and, three and six. Months. Okay, three and six. Now, if you do three plus six, how much is this? Three plus six? Nine. 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 And if you do six plus three, how much is it? Nine. Nine. So if you see, you take any two real numbers, you add them like this, or you add them like this, both of them will be equal. So that is the first property. Is this clear? Yes. No. Second property says, second is for the multiplication. Commutative, so you, you read it like this. Commutative property for addition, commutative property for multiplication. So multiplication says that if you take any two numbers, real numbers A and B, and you multiply them, A into B will be same as B into A. You can take your same example. If you take three into six, how much is this? 18. 18. And if you do 6 into 3, this is 18. also 18. 18. So both of them are equal. So commutative addition and commutative in multiplication. Are these two properties clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Second property is called associativity property. So you take three real numbers, any three real numbers, A, B, and C. So what associativity property says that if you add A plus B first 
and then add a C to it, this will be same as adding B plus C first and then adding A to it. Okay, so understand if you add A plus B first and then add C to it, that will be same as adding B plus C first and then A. Understand this with an example. We'll take three, seven and five. Okay, so you add three plus seven first and then you add five to it. So how much will this be? Seven plus three is 10. Fifteen. Yes, and 10 plus five, 15. This is same if you add seven plus five first. So how much is seven plus five? 12, 12. And, then, and then you add 3 to it again 15 so both of them are same so what associativity property says a plus b whole uh, bracket plus c is same as a plus bracket b plus c is the associative property clear what is associative property yes, sir. now yes. the same thing goes for multiplication same thing So associative property of multiplication says that if you multiply B plus C first, sorry, B into C first, and then you multiply A to it, that will be same as multiplying A and B first, and then multiplying C to it. Is this clear? Let's see example. So three into seven into five. So first you multiply the bracket. So 7 into 5 is 35. And 3 into 35? 105. How much? 105. 105. This is same as if you multiply 3 into 7 first and then multiply 5 to it. So 3 into 7, 21. 21 into 5, again 105. So what associated property says that in addition and multiplication, the, in addition, if you add A plus B and then C is same as A plus bracket B plus C. Same thing in multiplication. So same. if you do A multiplied by C, then multiplied by B, it would be, so same. It would be the same uh, answer. Uh, yes, yes, correct. You mean to say like this. So this is equal to A into C into B. Correct? Yes, you'll get the same thing because it is associated. Let's see the third property. So you know the two properties. First is commutative and commutative in addition and commutative in multiplication. Second, associative. So associative in addition, associative in multiplication any doubts in these two properties no sir our next property is a little bit different and important one and that is identity first understand what is identity now identity is different in addition and it is different in multiplication so I'll tell you the definition. Okay, so suppose two, I think two here, two plus something should give me two. What that something should be? Zero. Zero. Three plus something should give me three. What will it be? Zero. Zero. 22 plus something should give me 22. So what it should be? Zero. Zero again. Okay. Now, can you see some pattern in this? You're adding zero to any number. It is giving you that number itself. Correct? You're adding zero to any number and that is giving the number itself. So, <clears throat> zero 
is called as the additive identity or identity in addition. That means you're adding zero to any number and you're getting that number, that number itself you're getting. So it's like a reflection. So zero is the identity in ad addition. So what if this says that for any number, you add a zero to it, you will get that number itself. So there is an id zero is called as the identity element in addition. Is this clear? So adding a number to zero, you get that number itself. That is the identity property. Fine? Yes, sir. Okay. So now in, in uh, addition, zero is the identity. What about multiplication? What is a number you multiply with any number, you will get that number itself. For example, yes. So two multiplied by something should give you two itself and that is one. Same thing, three multiplied by something should give you three itself and that is one. So one is such a number that you multiply it with any other number, you will get that number itself. So one is called as a multiplicative identity or ide identity in multiplication. Is that clear? So you see the pattern. Zero is a number that after adding it to any number, you get that number itself. One is such a number that after multiplying it with any number, you get that number itself. Is this clear? Identity? Yes. Okay. Now, the last property, and that is called as inverse. Inverse, okay. Now I'll tell you one. Two, you add it with which real number to get zero? What number should be here that I get zero? It can be integer also. Minus zero. Minus? Minus what? Minus two. Minus, minus two. two. Correct. Correct. So if you put minus two here, two plus of minus two will become two minus two and you will get zero. Three. What number should be in this box to get zero? Minus three. Minus three. So can you see the pattern? A number, if you add it with its negative. Okay, so two, you're adding it with negative two. You're getting what you're getting? What? Zero. zero. Uh, but, uh, but what is zero? The identity. Yeah, Ide addition identity. Yes, correct. Zero is addition identity. So you see, you take any real number and you add it with its negative. You are getting the addition identity. So you say that minus two and two are inverse of each other. Okay. Or we say additive inverse or ad inverse in addition. You can say it anything of those. So two and minus two are inverse of each. So you take any real number A, what will it be its additive inverse? Minus A. Minus A. So A plus of minus A will give you zero. So A and minus A in addition, they are inverse of each other. Is this clear, inverse in addition? Okay, so now let's see multiplication. Okay, let's take an example. Three multiplied by something should give you one. What to put in this box? Uh, 
one. If I put one here, then three into one is three. But I want one here. It has to be a real number. One upon three? Yes. One upon three. One upon three is a real number. And three and three will get cancelled and you get one. Similarly, four into what will give you one? One upon four. One upon four. So you see something. What is one upon four? What is this one upon three, one upon four? If you see, it is the reciprocal of the number here. Do you know reciprocal? Reciprocal is you interchange numerator denominator. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will. So, so here, when I say just three, what is in the numerator? Three. Three. And in the denominator, nothing means? One. 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 So if you take the reciprocal, this becomes one upon three. Correct? So here, if you see, these are the reciprocal of the number here. And when you, when you multiply both of them, what do you get? One. And one is the? Multiplicative, multiplicative inverse. Identity. 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 One is a multiplicative identity. Okay. So, since after multiplying these two numbers, you get multiplicative identity. So, these two numbers are called as inverse of each other or multiplicative inverse. Okay. These two numbers are called as 3 and 1 upon 3, 4 and 1 upon 4 are called as a multiplicative inverse of each other. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So now I'll ask you one question. What is the additive inverse of eight? Hmm? Zero. Additive inverse. Minus, minus eight. Minus. And what is the multiplicative inverse of eight? One upon eight. One upon eight. Correct. So minus eight is the additive inverse. One upon eight is the multiplicative inverse. So the reason eight plus minus eight will give you zero, and zero is the additive identity. And for this, 8 into 1 upon 8 will give you 1, and that is a multiplicative identity. So is this clear? So yes, whenever, whenever there is a question, additive identity, you just take the negative of that number. And whenever the question is on multiplicative identity, you take the reciprocal of that number. Okay, so three main properties, commutative, associative, identity, and inverse clear yes sir.